Ten seconds remaining. Earth Spirit. Team Secrets turn to pick. Dark Sia. Team Secrets turn to pick. Axe. Radiant Team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the TI6 Regional Qualifiers. We are here with our last tiebreaker game of the day for the EU Qualifiers. It is Secret versus Fantastic Five. Secret one game away from making it to the TI main event. Fantastic Five looking to play spoiler and get to another tiebreaker tomorrow morning. Making sure that this goes on a bit longer and we'll see if that's going to be the case. I'm Mott. He's God's David. How do you feel about this game? We just saw Secret roll over Escape Gaming. They look to be the strongest team and I think they have some pretty good chances against Fantastic Five here. They look to be like the strongest team, but Fantastic Five is like that wildcard team. They came through open qualifiers. Right. They've been causing upset after upset. They beat Secret and Alliance in the uh, in the, uh, the group stage, mm -hmm. uh, the round robin, and hey, it's possible they could do it again. So I think Fantastic Five, you can't count them out by any means, but Secret, they've got momentum, and they, they look like the strongest team, even if that it's BO1. So, so They like, look like the old Secret, I should say. I mean, they have pretty much everybody. They have the new edition of Bubba. With that, we have a draft in a way. We'll jump into the game. It is the same exact start that we saw Team Secret have last game, which was the Darkseer Axe. Fantastic Five go for the Earth Spirit Timbersaw, but the Axe played by Puppy usually uh, gets pretty farmed. The Darkseer for Bulba is very strong as well. This is the exact same start, and uh, I think it's a very good start for Team Secret here as well. Yeah, it feels like Puppy has really shined on the two heroes, E.T. and Axe, and it's like they've they've recognized that getting him one of these two early on is one of the most important things for like their, their formula to success. Uh, and it, you could theoretically ban them both out, but then you have heroes like Terra Blade slipping through the pool, the right. Timbersaw, another big pick. But uh, imagine Fantastic Five have obviously been seeing how Puppy plays the Axe. They can test the off lane. There's Axe Darks here, and Either they're going to look to secure that safe lane, put the Earth Spirit down there, or they're going to make sure they win the other two lanes. Right. I mean, at this point, this is a, a good start for Fantastic Five with the Earth Spirit, the Timber Saw. Getting rid of the, the, the Death Prophet as well, which was what Eternal Envy had in the last game, and he he actually had kind of a rough landing stage against the Timber Saw, but was able to come back and have a very good... Um, and again, Team Secret go for Dire. They did this last game where they picked Dire, they picked Ember, or Earth, uh, excuse me, Death Prophet, and they just took Roche after Roche after Roche after Roche and played very calm, cool, and collected. And I think that's something that has mentioned that with the BO1 format, Dire becomes even better. Like, there already is a Dire advantage now, perhaps even more than in the last patch, which was perhaps a bit more even, uh, maybe ever, ever so slightly Dire favored on big lands, but in BO1s, when it comes down to these tense situations, games are going to naturally drag longer. Teams are going to play safer, passively, more not so much passively, but they'll take less chances. We saw that yet the last game. Secret really took their time breaking high ground. Buff was kind of talking about it. you're in this scenario where you're going to play it as safe as possible, and that's where Roche comes into play even more because it comes down to three, four, five Roches. So. Picking Dire in BO1s, I, I think the, the Dire advantage is bigger in BO1s than BO3s. Yeah, I would agree with you. And and especially with teams that are prepared with, you know, with strategies or, or just... They, they know how to utilize that Dire advantage, which is what uh, Nahaz was talking about also. He was saying that OG... Or actually, Purge was mentioning this on the panel. He was saying that OG at um, the Manila Major, they worked around that Dire advantage. And it pretty much won them the Grand Finals in that Best of Five series. Mm -hmm. And I don't disagree with him. So and that's, how do you, that's how you utilize the game. Is If you're just so good that really all that, that it, it takes for you to win the game at, at some point is just having dire advantage. Team Secret are going to take it every time that, that it's available to them. Um, so it's it's really, really important for them to grab it. And now they just have to find a team or a lineup that, that kind of suits them to get Roche quickly, maybe have some good team fight on top of that. Um, they've obviously got a wide hero pool on all of their players, and there's still a lot to to, to, to pick up here. And, and I'm excited to see what Secret go for. Yeah. And the DP, without the DP, it naturally changes the whole dynamic of your lineup because you don't have that Roche taking potential. There's a few substitutes, Invoker is probably one of the better ones that comes to mind as a Roche taking mid. 
uh, but it doesn't match up. And unless you're really drafting like a Lycan or something for the safe lane, you haven't got that big. I mean, you've got the Roche advantage by being on Dire, but you haven't got that 15 minute let's take Roche, which secret. Eternal Envy teams, like, I feel like it's such a classic Envy thing. Like, the number of times on his old Cloud9 team would like sneak Roche, even from the Radiant side, they probably took Roche more per game than any other team, and they did it earlier than any other team. I'd like to see that stat. Uh, I think you're probably right. I'm going to go ahead and just assume that's correct because it, it, that Envy just, he's known for, for that type of play. I mean, he, he loves his Roshan. I think that this is right now looking more like a team fight oriented lineup than a Roche taking lineup, but they, they still don't have their safe lander, which could turn into somebody that does go for a Desolator or the Lycan, as you mentioned. Um, they could pick up a Slaughter for themselves with the amp damage, which would mm. certainly help. But right now, they, they this is more... And, and Jug may fit there the build go. to a certain extent. I think yeah. that's probably a fine choice for them. Yeah, the Slaughter is good for Roche, but perhaps not as good for scaling when you've already committed to a Darkseer. Then you've got a Darkseer as well as Slaughter, who's more like your tempo controller initiator. I haven't seen secret run him as that like hard carry like a player like QO's maybe done for MVP, but right. Jug, you've got Roche potential, you've got a true carry, and then mid lane is pretty open as far as what they can run there. And so that will be their last pick for Fantastic Five. They go for the Oracle. This has been very common in the American qualifiers, especially played by Stan King for FDL and a couple of other teams. But uh, I haven't seen it much in the European qualifiers. Oracle will come through as their secondary support. And this was something that I've really enjoyed, Fluff, uh, and his insight. He talked about how the four position, all about super, or maybe not super aggression, but aggression, rotations around the map, five position support, very defensive. And you can see that with the Oracle. So this time for Team Secret, Disruptor a little bit more aggressive than usual. But the Oracle, obviously a defensive support for Fantastic Five. With False Promise for a Timber Saw, I feel like that's a very good combination of spells and heroes. Um, I think that could work out well in their favor. And I, I just like the nukes from Oracle. See, with Purifying Flames in particular is very strong. Yeah. It's some good b magic burst damage against an Axe. Who uh, that's gonna that's gonna work out well. If Axe initiates on your team, you can look to counter initiate on him. You Timbersaw Oracle. I feel like you're gonna blow up an Axe in no time at all. So we'll see what Fantastic Five look to grab now. They need to start picking up some of their other cores. That's all that's really left for them. Depending where they run the Timbersaw, we're seeing right. mostly uh corpus like mid more farm centric timber souls we're not right. saying this like let's send him to the offline and he plays from behind this it is... has been mostly mid lane safe lane the past couple of games and especially so i i would imagine fantastic five do that i'd be very surprised to see him go off lane and there's no real reason to send him there now i don't think mm -hmm. i think you still go for the, the straight up timber saw mid or safe lane depending on who the mid matchup is and even if they have a bad matchup for the timber saw mid it's still probably fine for fantastic oh. five night stalker coming out and well, do you think this is offlane? Yeah, this will be offlane. Oh, slash Iron Talon, you know. You know. Iron Talon I jungle. Mean, <laughs> off lane slash Iron Talon jungle, pretty yeah. much same thing at this point. I mean, that's that's the role that they're in. Yeah, the really nice thing about the secret Jug pick and just the position they're in is that they fourth pick Jug, which is a hero that doesn't have natural counters. He's like, you can kind of pick it up safely and not worry that your opponents have two picks left. And it also can be run either mid or safe lane. So they get to then see... Fantastic Five's last pick, they can figure out where Timbersaw's landing, they get to see the offlaner, see the mid, see the carry, and then they can respond with the overall last pick of this draft, which is either a mid or a carry. So they're very, there's so many heroes that they can fit in because of that. Yeah. Uh, secret now, 16 seconds left in reserve time. Shadow Demon seeing some play, some bands as well as picks recently. And uh, the band will come out. A lot of people, Soul Catcher very strong, obviously. Disruption pretty good. Um... It's interesting they ban it out there, but there's the little band coming through, which is even more interesting, actually. That's, uh, it's Fantastic Five have played some games of Luna, so it's kind of just a... They've done their homework. ...targeted ban at, at this team specifically. And okay. There's the Invoker mentioned. That's kind of like the closest thing to a Death Prophet as far as uh, being a mid laner that can push and take Roshan, more importantly. So we could have seen like Artesi Invoker mid and Jug. Yeah, he's, been, but... he's played that a uh, fair bit. Um, Artesi yeah. has, and... I, I feel like if Secret think Jug's going to have a fine matchup mid, which there aren't many bad matchups for Jug mid, they're going to pick a carry last just because there's not many... I feel like the pool of carries is bigger than the pool of mids yes. that are viable. Like, I'm like, which mids are actually that great here? And there's no Death Prophet. Alchemist is like the one I'm looking at that is a consideration, but... I don't know if that's it's, what Secret have in oh, mind. Oh, Morphling safe lane pick. Oh. Actually, imp interesting to know, Secret banned out Morphling last game, last yeah. pick, and now they let it through. It's this is an anti-mage game. I'm, I'm, I, I feel like Envy's probably there. Like, this is where Black is, Mage. Black is screaming AM right now. I, I, the AM versus Timbersaw matchup is one of the... I saw an AM beat a Timbersaw. Timbersaw has been one of those series that's kind of 
had some great success this qualifier, but AM destroys Timbersaw come mid to late game. Yeah. It's AM versus Morphling kind of goes both ways. I think it's slightly AM favored, although. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're going right. to get mid, though. They'll get TA. TA mid, Juggernaut going into the safe lane, and it's probably going to be the TA for Envy. Ild and Morphling. Um. I don't know. I just feel like I, I feel as though I like the disruptor pick. I like the the team fight coming out from secret, but I'm not sold. I I like their last draft better. I don't know if Jug TA is going to be able to do yeah. enough this game because eventually late game Morphling is going to do some serious work, and I'm not sure that Jug can contest him or even the TA can contest him that well, that. And we talked about just taking Roche as being one of the secret part of the secret plan, and that's pretty much one of the major re reasons they picked TA here. Uh, Invoker was banned. Death Prophet, more importantly, was banned, and TA gives you Roche taking potential. So yeah. what is looking to be a slower pace farm game, the Morphling, a big sign of that. Timbersaw is a hero that scales, wants to farm, scale into the mid to late game. Secret's like, okay, it's going to be a long game. Let's make sure we have Roche. Let's make sure we have another carry. Let's pick TA. Okay. I mean, you're right about the, the Roche taking ability. Obviously, Meld and Desolator, very good for that. And uh, TA, not to mention, pretty good for getting side traps down on the ground. And we'll see th how things do shape up here for Secret and for Fantastic Five. Remember, there is a lot at stake for Fantastic Five, as well as Secret. If you'd like to get into uh, the TI main event, if you're Secret here, you win the game and you're good to go. So we'll see how things shape up for now. So far, Pilot Diet already rotating in towards that mid lane, looking to drop a ward down. That won't be contested and might get de awarded, probably not. Puppy TP and I think trying to get the ward down, but it looks like Yol did the same, making sure Puppy couldn't get that ward in that aggressive dual lane off lane. And I mean, if there's one thing you're like, you're trying to study your opponents between games, um, Fantastic Five had a break before this game. As like a support player, you watch where do they TP at level one? Where where are their preferred warding spots? Like you can your captain, your draft is maybe looking at their drafts and rotations a bit, but if you're just like the support player, you want to know where you want to TP at level one. So that's a good. He obviously read some of those secret replays and kind of figured out where to go. They will, I think, see this ward placed down. Secret had that ward over towards the. Um... Actually, I don't know if they saw that rotation. Where's that ward placed? Oh, they should have seen the rotation up towards that top river spot. They should know that ward was placed down, and so Secret should have uh, a counter ready to go. They have the axe as well as Pilot Die with the sentry. But Pasha, he's been scouted out. Pilot Die and RTZ walking up to the high ground, being pretty aggressive here, but they just really want to secure this top rune spot, making sure that there's nothing happening with the Night Stalker. Meanwhile, down bottom, it'll be BZZ grabbing it for the Timber Saw. So. Not uh, Secret's not getting both of the wards this time, and then Puppy drops the sentry as well to, I believe, block the camp, although my alt, alt button isn't working. I believe this blocks it. Yeah. I think this camp, probably. Yeah, it's a pretty big circle. I, he, Orange, the Night Stalker, pinged it out, so it looks like he knows that was planted there and needs uh, some sentry help. But No Iron Town, by the way. He'll get it eventually, okay. I imagine. But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if he's having a rough lane at one point, I'm sure he will go to the jungle. He's with you. probably expecting Puppy to spend more time bottom, because going back to last game, it was a Axe, Darkseer, dual lane bottom, but completely different from Secret. Darkseer's jungle, Axe's jungle, Secret's going full greed mode here. Bulba yeah. with the Iron Talon. This is a complete change up from Secret. I think they see this more playing and like, we can out greed these guys. Rolling boulder, Pilot Eye, Puppy's up there. He doesn't have call, counter helix. He went for it at level one, just so you can jungle. Yo will take some right clicks and thunder strike. Shouldn't die here, I don't think, but he'll take a lot of damage. He has no salve, but tank is a plenty. And Yo will be able to get up towards the enemy jungle, back towards mid. He's going to tango up real quick and. Uh, they have another hero coming in. It was Bulba, but he doesn't have vacuum yet. They could search Puppy up, but Yo will just rolling Boulder away. That was a long chase. I think just, Puppy just wasting a lot of time just trying to zone him out there. Yeah, Puppy wants to keep tabs of the Earth Spirit because it protects all your lanes if you know where he is, and he can't be aggressive if Axe is kind of keeping vision of him. So that's why at the end he's like, I got a rolling Boulder away because you've got to break that line of sight yeah. before you can get active on the map again. Now he's gonna. He was thinking about heading back top lane, but unfortunately he's kind of stuck in no man's land. If he goes to mid, there's a ward that will scout him out. This is like one of the most common spots. If you're if you're sitting top, you rotate mid as a, an earth spirit. It's gonna be scattered out easily by that ward. So uh, finding a kill there will be harder. Uh, but he's. I do like this from you all, and this is something you'll see often with earth spirits and elder titans. Is you just leech the jungler's experience, maybe try to get some CS, and actually just be aggressive. And this is why Puppy wanted to follow him in because he wanted to prevent just this. Bulba needs to make sure he dodges the rolling boulder here. Puppy is here, Iron Shell is up on the axe, and uh, Yor will just he'll sit around the creep stack. Oh, can he, ones. can he get the set? It's going to take a lot of damage. I don't He's going to rolling boulder oh, and get nice. it in the process, and then get to the tier 2 tower, oh. pull the creep wave. He might actually die here. Yep. And that's first blood for Bulba. Oh, he, did, hey. he, got the, he did damage, so he gets the kill. Jeez. That's, uh... 
That's not what he wanted. Yeah. If he didn't put a stone down, he would have rolled through, got the last hit, and then been on the low ground and not rolled into the tower. But because he put the stone down, he went too far. Meanwhile, Pasha is going to go out on the Thunder Strike top lane. And uh, the rolling boulder from Yol. He's going to come in looking for Pilot Die. He has the Orb of Venom, but Envy's here to help zone him out. And it's just going to be two quick kills going for Secret. That first blood gives Bulba so much more than I think... Those uh, the stacks were going to give him a lot, but uh, Bulba's completely fine <laughs> with getting to the river with yeah. River Vals. Oh slime. yeah, what is? I'm How sure... can you play Dota with this? <laughs> Our team is just trolling. The yeah. NA Dota people always do this just to troll. Oh god, this is. Is this a... I mean, it affects both teams, but if you've obviously played with it more, you maybe you maybe he's probably like been practicing his scrims with the slime river. That's like a new way of like taunting your opponent. God damn me for Arteezy, honestly. He's I've, sitting in I, Have you seen this slime one though? No, I've never seen this one. I've seen like electric blue. I've seen yeah. dry. I, saw I, dry. I like the electric blue. Yeah, I do that like That looks good. One. This one just looks... It looks awful. awful. Oh, yeah, it looks this, awful. This looks incredibly awful. Uh, the dry one I saw yesterday. I didn't know dry was a thing. It literally just looks like there's no river there. I was okay. Like, okay, that's weird, but... Yep. The blood one's pretty cool too. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. I don't. I think I might have seen it once, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. So right now, looking at the laning setup, Illidan, of course, is going to be getting free farm here for the most part. He's sitting at 24 last hits. He was behind in CS. Meanwhile, Kinetic Field, Pasha getting spun on. Should still be okay, as now he's under the tower and the TP's going to come through from the Oracle. Gets cancelled, and so he won't need to have the Oracle out of lane bottom. And our man is probably okay here because he just can pull and get experience that way and maybe even gold. Sentries drop down inside the pole camp or the, excuse me, the hard camp. And that camp was not blocked. I don't, I think he was looking for maybe a ward here. I don't know why he I, dropped that sentry. Yeah, That's you're blocking very your strange. camp. I'm more <laughs> not a hero that rotates in the jungle that well, but. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. Uh... I kind of want to draw a casual question mark on on the ground. Pilot Eye, Silent Step, Rolling Boulder. They had the Boulder Smash to start things. They need Posh with the Void, but it's down for another five seconds. TP and Puppy, he's got Call, I hope. No, he's only just got the Battle Hunger. He's level two. Another Void coming out, and Posh needs two more right clicks. Body Blocks not there for Puppy in time, and Posh will run out with Boots of Speed at night time. Level four is now up, and on top of that, Rolling Boulder away from Yol. He should be able to get out in time. And it looks like they will secure a kill on the support without losing anything in the process. Nicely done from Fantastic Five getting the first kill on the board. Yeah, Pi. Didn't need to turn around there, but he thought with Puppy's help he could get aggressive again. But nice I don't know play. if they can get this kill. This no. guy, this guy's a little too tanky. Tranquil Stout, he's he's fine, but especially with RTZ rotating up there. I mean, for Fantastic Five, it's going to be very much playing like this four protect one type strategy moving forward with the Morphling, where you're just Ooh. kind of all in on Illidan going big in late game. Has Bulba. a salve, so he doesn't mind taking that. It's like not even really damage being taken. So Level three iron shell. That's just the jungle going to work already. And you can see he's yeah. gotten some some decent farm there. They want to push down this tower, but there's another hero rotating in. It is puppy, and if they go too far, Illidan might get caught by a call, but still not there yet. He's only level three. He actually is waiting for. No, he got two points of counter heal. So I think he was waiting for. Oh, but here's the iron shell, and Illidan might have to strength morph even further. He's got four stick charges now. Five surge forward. Fate's edict will avoid some of that iron shell damage. Counter heal prox going through. He has the creep wave on him, and Illidan might get to. He still has those agility traits. We'll finally switch to Trank and stay alive. Counter Helix Prox missing, and Puppy might actually go down. The tower hits. He's getting blocked Where's by the, the creep spins? waves, and there's no spins. And Illidan gets the kill. RNG is not there to favor you. Ice Frog says no. He uh, when he turned to initially right click Puppy, I was like, there's three creeps on him. I don't know if that's like a good idea when you're on. It was probably like two spins from death. If he got a bit unlucky there, Puppy kills him, but. I mean, he probably got really unlucky. Yeah, Elden looks like a genius now. Yol gets blocked by Arteezy. He'll find that kill. He won't find our man. That's just a smart play from Arteezy. He's able to move in quickly enough to block the rolling boulder. That's the problem with the Earth Spirit sometimes. And Arteezy is sitting at 33 CS, 29 for BZZ, so it's not that bad. Yep. This is one there, but... Denies slightly favoring the TA, but BZZ, obviously not really. Timbersaw not really for his denying capabilities. No, no I don't think so. Or his last hitting with his right click, one or the other. Yeah. Has gone great. for three in reactive armly. Normally you see like more like a two-two-two build is what I've seen most Timbers do. But I think he wants to go a bit more defensive. You're against a TA where there's a lot of right clicks potentially coming in. You're taking more harass, so just being a bit more conservative. With oh, his Pasha has gone too far for this kill. Actually, I gelled up on Puppy instead. Vacuum not available. He can TP now, I think, if he'd be okay, and then looks like he doesn't need to. Although the Glimpse back, not there. Level 3, two points into Kinetic Field, not the 1-1-1 one, one, one we're used to seeing. But now mid lane RTP, rolling Boulder on. He still has the Refraction up. Now it's down for 10 seconds. There's the Chakram coming through. He's got a side trap ready to go. He'll use it. BZZ's got Timber Chain, but it's only level 2. Chakram coming in. It's just not enough damage with Bulba nearby. 
They don't want to die for the kill. With three heroes around there, they might have been able to go for it, but they're just not going to be that aggressive. That was just refraction for it. I was like, I was kind of clicking and saying like, oh, does he have double refraction? No, it was just, just needed the one and... All right, last hits. There we go. Nope, that's not what I want. Where's the net worth? All right, we'll figure it out later. <laughs> uh, there it is, Q. Okay. Now, note, I'm not on my own account. That's why I had to do that. Yeah, this was a, a bit of a last minute thing. Where we, <laughs> we jumped in to cast this game for you guys, but... Uh... It's it's a big match. It's secret. You win it. You're going to TI. You're going to Seattle. So this is a good reason that I, mean, I don't want to say they're playing super conservative. They're it's more that their strategy by nature is looking to be greedier, um, and they know they can get away with the Greeks the more playing. That's just how Artizi likes to play it. How it's how Envy likes to play. It. And if his supports can play around him, then even better. And you talked about Sandy Bulba to the jungle. You talked about Puppy in the jungle now, and then. Net worth wise, they're doing pretty well. Three of the top, or two of the top three, excuse me, going their way, including the Jug, who we haven't really talked about, but it is going to be Envy picking up a Void Stone, perhaps more than likely the Battle Fury later on down the road, which don't, is fine. Don't believe in the Yules Juggernaut? No, I'm not quite there yet, but maybe if Sumail does it somehow <laughs> mid, I'll probably be a fan of it. That's all, that's all it's going to take. Yeah, I mean, it, like, uh, I saw Sumail do terribly yesterday. I'm like, well, I guess that's a thing now. I'm sure I'll see that in pubs. Great That's stuff. the uh, the monkeys forever. That guy got like up to like eight KMMR just playing Terrorblade mid maxing reflection. Really? Yeah. I don't That's know about eight KMMR, but he. That's he, not that shocking. He, he he like grinds that hero playing at mid. Monkey's pretty good player. Yeah. So for now, it's going to be able to continue to farm. They did take that tier one tower down bottom. I don't think they denied it. I'm pretty sure they got the last hit on the tower. Yeah. yeah. So more got it. Uh, slightly out farming Jug in terms of net worth, but that's just the tower gold and the kill he got. So not. Not too big a deal. Jug was involved with and got an assist earlier, but I mean, realistically, Jug will is pretty much on par with Morphling and will accelerate once you have Battle Fury. So the two carries doing as you'd expect them to do. Yeah. The two mids doing as you'd expect them to. They're kind of farming blow for blow. Night Stalker is a bit behind Darks here, but he's kind of trying to be a bit more aggressive. And I think the key phase for Fantastic Five is the next night. Well, they're oh, going to make that, it night now. Yeah. The uh, let's say 12 pop. minutes in, but no, they'll they'll accelerate that timing. They'll in. just go for it. They're going to temper chain and looking for Bulba and Envy. Envy does have Omni Slash, and now it looks like Fantastic Five looking to back. Way rtz has got a side trap in one. There's the false promise. Good Omni, but doesn't do nearly enough damage. Posh just takes up all of that. The sound comes through. Illidan now in. The wall drop down. Doesn't get anything done. They'll lose the hero in the end of Fear Spirit. Now BZZ in trouble. Walks through the wall. And they get off the Blade Fury kill. They're looking for the void. Posh and Illidan walk through as well. The side trap is up. The waveform needs to go there so he can get the kill and he will. And it will be a two for two exchange when it's all said and done. Maybe three for two. They get off the feet, Edict Artizi's coming back in. This is so tough. The glimpse coming through. Waveform, not enough mana for it. On the other side, he still has his ring of health. He's regening up here. Comes Yol back in. Boulder Smash. Refraction's still there. He's got plenty of charges. Here's, here's mana for uh, Waveform. There we go. Um, Puppy's looking. This could be a big call. On to two. He gets silenced up in the end. Still, they're just going to work with the Iron Shell. They get the call off. The one dug, two dead. And eventually, it is Secret that takes the engagement. There's a TP coming in, but it's, I don't think it's going to really do anything. Meanwhile, Arteezy finds another one on the backside as the Air Spirit got chased down. And so, Secret all of a sudden, because Arteezy just is able to survive and have his refraction used well, he gets plenty of kills there. Timbersaw missed a chain on mid to kill off the Darks here, it looked like. He went aggressive and just slightly missed the mid tree, and... Everything kind of snowballed from there. The Darkseer is staying alive to me is the really big one because he just he stays on the edge and he's surging the axe in. He's putting an iron shell on the axe on the TA. He's giving these these other heroes on his team more firepower and just the ability to re-engage. So where does that put you for Fantastic Five? And where does that put um, you for Secret? I feel like that's a really bad fight for Fantastic oh, Five. Oh yeah, it's it's pretty awful for them. Uh, I think even before that they were slightly behind. This kill will help things out a bit. Illidan, yep, he gets it. But uh, the big thing was like the cores were on par with each other, but Secret have the axe who's getting more farm. So Secret have farm going the way of four heroes on the side of Fantastic Five. You're running like true two supports. Both Oracle and Earth Spirit are playing that like uh, kind of selfless role. Earth Spirit roaming around playing pressure, Oracle being defensive, Axe is playing greedy. So even if the cores are on par, Secret, they're getting more farm because of the Axe. They also have more access to Roshan. They have more access to stack their Ancients as we're seeing. TA right. can farm that. So Secret are going to pull ahead using their farming tools, using the Rosh advantage, using a Jug Battle Fury. Yeah, they're going to have that Battle Fury up pretty soon as Envy, I, I think he did die in that last engagement. Still, he has his Perseverance up. Arteezy now uh, buys a Blink Dagger yeah. coming out, and uh, he's going to have that for further aggression. Yeah, good luck killing him now uh, with the Refraction Blink. Pretty much, you, you kind of have to get the Refraction down as he pops it up, and maybe get a Silence out from Nine Pasha or something, I don't know, but... Yeah, like you said, if he has that refraction melt, he can just blink away, and you're, you're fine, pretty much. 
They'll look for Envy bottom, and they don't have a silence here. They have to get up a, a nine posture silence, and it's just not there in time. Forces in, the TP will come through, and there's no way they can stop it. And it's just not there. The, the, the crippling fear is actually a pretty small radius to actually be able to cast, so it's just smart from MVP to, as soon as they see anybody, just spin and TP away. Yeah, good safe reactions from him, and Fantastic Five still, they're still going to scale well. That's a morphing Timbersaw. There are, I'm trying to like think how good are they at dealing with a Timbersaw late game, and it's, it's not bad for them, I'll catch you all out here. But uh, as far as bursting him down, the, the nice thing about TA is if you find the Timbersaw when he's got no, none of his reactive armor charges up, that first melt strike does so much damage that he's got no armor at that point. Timbersaw without the, the reactive armor is incredibly, well, not so much squishy, but he's incredibly low armor. Yeah. So uh, at early stages and even the mid-game stage of the game, TA with Deso, Blink, Meld can quickly take away half of BZZ's HP. Yeah, he's got three armor uh, and infused raindrop will not help you against melt strike from RTZ. So although that is a great item, it is is not good against the physical damage of a TA, nor the physical damage of a Juggernaut with Omni Slash. However, he still doesn't have that battle for you, but he's getting pretty close. Ilden is still above him in terms of net worth for the time being, and Ilden's item is going to be the almost certainly Linked Sphere. In fact, it is almost, yeah, it's definitely Linked Sphere. There's no way it's going to be anything else. Yep. Which is fine. It's just it's, the standard Morphling pickup. And the, the Glimpse being the one big spell that you want to block, and it's less... It's kind of like the same as Lincoln's on Medusa, where it's as much about the stats and the HP regen the item gives as it is about the spell block. In fact, it's more about the sustain you get from the item than the spell block. Yeah, the mana regen, very good. Being able to waveform jungle camps all the time, a lot quicker with Aquila and yeah. Lincoln's Sphere with because Perseverance. Because you're a hero that doesn't naturally jungle, you have to take damage to jungle. There's that Meld Strike you were talking about with no reactive armor stacks, and he's just dead to the static storm. Yol's going to have to just hightail it out of there. 40 seconds. The glimpse comes through, Posh is gonna get put back. Arteezy though, might be in trouble magnetize. That's Big a kill. pretty good trade, as Elden is the one that gets Whoa. that. That is a dominating streak for Morphling. Almost 500 gold, it looks like, for the uh, the Morphling when it's yeah. all said and done, and that's going to put him very close to his Lincoln's here. Where the gold ends up and who the killer's on is just very influential there. Illidan, and you, you're running full protect one, you're happy trading your mid hero for the for the enemy mid when it's your carry, that one here, that one carry, your one position carry getting the kill. So Morphling, very happy with that. And he pulls ahead 1,000 net worth above TA, even more above Envy's Jug. Yeah, that's huge. And, and Illidan is going to have to do some serious work this game, especially with the Timbersaw getting caught out a couple of times in a row. And maybe when he gets his Bloodstone, it'll be different. Envy is going to be close to Pasha. He's going to find him. Can they get the Silence off? Yes, the Void will come out. They need a Fortune's End. There's nobody else over here. They're going to get that Fortune's End off. They're going to bring him down with the Purifying Flames. Dead for 45, 314 gold. It's going to be Oracle, sadly. Still, they get the Tier 1 Tower on top of this. They're going to push into the Tier 2, and guess what? Ilden has got enough money for his Lincoln Sphere now, and yep. all of a sudden, Fantastic Five have turned it around a fair bit. And they're still looking for more Armin and looking for at least a... I thought it was going to drop down a ward, but he's just going behind the tower for no good reason, I think. And getting aggressive. They know the Jug, the jug down. Secret's in a bit of a rough position as far as defending a tower. The Omni Slash is one of their biggest tools to do so. They should have Static Storm Puppy. Yeah. Now with the Blink, he's actually had it for a while. He's up to nine, uh, 900 gold. So. I, I like that like aggressive move from Oracle because you're in that position where it's like, we're not really going to... Our lineup doesn't push towers. Morphling right click is not there yet. So you're not going to get that tier two tower. So going like trying to scout behind the tower and find heroes for kills is a better approach because you can kill heroes. You can dive towers. You just can't kill them. All right. But now Jug's back. They'll go back to farming and look to just kind of continue to stabilize this game. So Jug and, and the Timber saw kind of in the same position. And really, Elden is taken over pretty heavily in this game now. His Lincoln Spear should be flying out of the Courier. I don't know what the hockey is, I'll just click on it. There it is, and also an Urn of Shadows, which has been on the Courier for a long time, and finally has been picked up by Pasha. He's not really that farmed, in fact, you look at the Axe, and it's actually pretty close, but the Blink Dagger is going to give you a bit of an advantage for the Axe in this the thing regard. Is the, the Axe is the full position as well, though, so yes. it's like the Axe and Docs here are kind of close to him and ahead of him, so still that scenario where Secret have four cores fighting into three, but it's not so much about the number of core heroes you have when there's a super fun Morphling. This is that kind of anti-mage type carry that can just put a game on his shoulders if he Darkness needs to. Darkness has been popped. They knew that Roche was happening. Chakram is going to try to push them out. They'll lose the tier one tower bottom. And they saw Secret stop for that tier one top, the bottom tower. It looked like they were just trading. Morphling's getting top tier one while Secret took bottom, but once Secret didn't go for it, 
Fantastic Five are like, hold on a second, they're not pushing bot, they're going for Roche, let's stop this. Secret is going to smoke up and they're going to wrap and look for Illidan, he's the prime target, Yol as well. This could be a bl big blink call, but it's not there, he misses, wait for him in time, it's Adaptive Strike, but there's going to be the, oh man, they missed the Static Storm on everyone, the Magnet's High is coming through, and Yol gets false promise at the tail end of the engagement, Chakra Marchese melted up, will maybe go down, but he just barely gets the refraction off, great call to stop any further damage, the Magnet's High will bring him down, misses the call, BZZ stays alive, they get the kill with more purifying flames. It's a three for one exchange. And Fantastic Five, what an engagement. Yeah. They, wow. It was so hard for Puppy to find the heroes for the blink call. He kind of had to blindly guess with that blink in. And the waveform meant that he didn't. Even if he catches Morphling there, they're unlikely to kill him because he's got Lincolns and he can morph strength. So it wasn't going to be a good call regardless. But Fantastic Five with a huge team fight to turn things in their favor. And they can try to take Roche now. It's going yeah, to be difficult. And. They might get in time. No Ortiz for 12 seconds. No Darks here for 13. Jug's coming in, but he's got no Omni Slash. He can't really threaten this. And he's going to get Rolling Boulder on. <laughs> Vision across the, the, I love it. the ravine from Yol. This is the Boulder Smash, and there it is. I mean, it, it gives him enough time to get the HSN Ild in, and they can get out cleanly now. Look how big the Morphling is now. 10k net worth all of a sudden. Glimpse back, Pasha. Get out of the kinetic field. Wait for him forward. Envy, get silenced up. Can they bring him down? Illidan, turn your attention to Envy. He gets up the healing ward. Spin will come through. Now the call is up. He's going to try to bring back Illidan and Yol. Yol is the big target that they want to bring down as Illidan is pretty much impossible and has the Aegis. Kinetic Field, they waveform through it. There's the Timber Chain, Adaptive Strike. They won't get the kill on Envy. They might get Puppy. They slow him for the side trap. There's going to be the Illidan using the Replicate. He blinks away and they can't get it done. Illidan not having the mana to replicate it in time. It was actually just not there. And they don't get any kill. Although, I think that's that's probably still fine oh, they, for yeah, Fantastic Five. They walk away the Aegis. Um, Jug as well as Axe both very close to going down. It would have been a huge win for them to get the kills, but ultimately it's it's still fine for them. They're in the great position all of a sudden. Morphling. He's ridiculously big. He's, yeah, he's going at Ethereal. He's like after all of a sudden. I was about to say, Ethereal Blade not amazing against the cores of like Jug and TA. TA yeah. has Refraction, Jug can Blade Fury it, but it's still a great item just when you're playing from ahead. When you're playing from ahead as Morphling, being able to instantly take out a support or a hero like Axe and Darkseid. Yeah. These heroes, yeah, they're, they're, they're relatively tanky, but a Morphling with an Ethereal Blade Lincoln's at like... 22 minutes or so is going to still shred them. Yeah, he's too far ahead now. I mean, even against the Axe, he'll probably be able to... With an Ethereal Blade and maybe one right-click afterwards, I think he, he brings down those heroes, no problem, especially the Axe. And uh, it is going to finally be the Bloodstone almost done. He needs the Vitality Booster. Same could be said for the Juggernaut. He finally has gotten his Battle Fury for Eternal Envy. I don't... I'm not a big fan of Envy going for the Battle Fury. I'm... Yes, yeah, Secret's plan is to be greedy and play this four-core lineup where you're farming the jungle axe, you've got the Darkseer farming, you've got a very greedy four position, but I think you get away with that by having a build on Envy that can fight better. You go for your, your drums, your manta, your defusal, and you can have these four cores, but you can actually fight when you have to. They get the refraction off, no silence for Pasha, but they still do a lot of damage to RTZ in the process. Envy really wants to finish up the ancient stack, but two black dragons are not something you should, I guess, lose your life over. Although, artizi has been caught in between a rock and a hard place, as there is a ward there. They're looking to jump on him, unfortunately. They have to go all the way around the tower, and Arteezy, I think, knows this. In fact, he's got the Blink Dagger. I don't think he'll be able to get out. Or rather, I don't think he'll be able to catch him because of the refraction being up. It was a good effort, but uh, it does push them back. And again, it just kind of chokes them out of the map. It, Secret want to be able to take the Ancient Stack, so they want to be able to push across the river. But they really can't right now because of how farm Dylan it is and the aggression from... Fantastic Five. And having an Aegis means they can play more aggressive. Take these, t Taking these Tier 2 towers sets you up to starve Secret out even more. Like you say, keep them away from the Ancient Stacks, and without Tier 2 towers up, Secret lose a lot of map control. Not and to mention Darkness. If, they're, if they even have wards down, they just they have no vision with the wards. In, and they don't even have any, I don't believe. They have one over here towards the, yeah. their own jungle, and that's it. There's... And when you get Ag's gem up on Night Stalker, say goodbye to any vision. And he's getting there. He's got the beginnings of an Ag's yep. Scepter to... Oh, I like this play. They're going to re-engage off the smoke. This is very smart. They're going to wrap and look for Arteezy, who's very far up. Arteezy is the ideal here to be in the front line, so to, to counter a smoke. They know game. that he's there, too. He's going to walk up and try to see us. Yeah. Instead, they're going to go to the back line, look for Puppy. They can't get it easily. If you get the blink off, it's a waste of smoke. And Z is going to go ahead and try to TP out. Call will be under three. The Static Storm on top of it. This might be a good fight. Back wall onto all five. Can they get the kills done here? They've already gotten the Oracle. Magnetizes up on Bulba. They might lose him. Still, though, a pretty good fight, all things considered, for Secret. It's a one-for-two exchange so far. Illidan might lose the Sages, but he will almost get Puppy in the process. The Omni Slash comes through. It's on the Ghost Scepter and Illidan. 
Still a one for nothing, or rather one for three exchange, and now BZZ's too far in. He went for that Timber Saw Chakram Willing Death. Now he's able to get up to the Timber Saw or Timber Chain up to the high ground. Glimpse back is there, and he will end up going down. He'll try the Timber Chain again, and finally, Secret with a huge static storm from Pile I Die into the vacuum wall. Boba and Pile I Die combining up to get the sickest fight, and they are not done. Illidan still with the Aegis getting called up. He's got waveform. May very well have to use it. They should have a glimpse. They've already broken the Lincoln Sphere, but he's too far away at this point, and that'll be the end, but that is in a spectacular fight coming through. That's, that's the one look combo. That's everything coming together perfectly for Secret. And you talk about having an Aegis being an advantage. Well, it's not an advantage if Secret can just ignore the Morphling and get everyone else in that combo. Morphling ends the fight still alive with an Aegis, so where, there is no Aegis advantage. And Secret lands everything they need to. Ooh, the Raindrop keeps him alive. Illidan still with the Aegis. He's got a Strength Morph and keep himself up and ready to go. I liked what he went for there. Raindrop keeps him alive, though. Good That's item. great item. <laughs> One of the best items in the game. Yeah. Also, Timbersaw just got his Bloodstone yeah. during that fight, and he just lo immediately loses four charges. That's not the ideal scenario for Timbersaw by any means. And not getting the suicide off, also not that's not exactly what you're hoping for to happen there. Envy's done a really good job of reacting with the Blade Fury. That was the one time at the Ancients he got caught out, but there's been now two or three scenarios where he's managed to just Blade Fury in time when he's about to get initiated on. And the of the TA, as the... Like, the two front lines for Secret has really done wonders for them as far as playing a greedy lineup against an aggressive one, and they get, they're getting away with it. Yeah, Elden is going to have that Ethereal Blade soon, and he's, I think, going to going to need it now. I mean, he's done a good job of carrying this game so far, but he just doesn't do the damage yet. And with an Ethereal Blade, I think that all changes. That extra damage coming yeah. out. Not only with, I think, his Ethereal Blade actual shotgun, but with the, the right-click that he does is pretty important. Good try on that boulder smash on Envy, but again, he played Furious at the right time, and he's looking to maybe go back in. Probably not. There's a lot of heroes here. With the Ethereal Blade, heroes like Axe have to be very careful about how they initiate, because your Axe, you're looking at the Blink, the Force Staff, you haven't got survivability, you haven't got a BKB, you haven't got a pipe to negate that magic damage, so you've got to play very carefully as Puppy when you initiate. Similar story for the Darkseer. I mean, Darkseer, perhaps a bit tankier, has the, the uh, mech as well. Uh, also, when he has the blink, he can just sit back and kind of counter-initiate, but these initiating heroes of Secret can get blown up right away at the start of a fight. Yeah, I mean, Secret kind of have to be careful with their positioning. Fantastic Five. Waiting. Nighttime has just ended, so if they want to fight, they'll have to do it with Darkness, which is level 2. Pretty short cooldown now, at least a little bit shorter. 120 seconds. A lot of good vision from Fantastic Five, but Secret are starting to find their footing. Pretty good net worth now on both RTZ and Envy. They'll smoke up and they'll look for an engagement. And they smoked under this Observer Ward. So this Man, is that going to be... missing that ward. Whew. Yeah, that's real unlucky. Now there's that Ethereal Blade. I wonder if you're Fantastic Five, if you look for an engagement on your own. They're just sitting right now behind their Tier 2 tower. There's somebody pushing into the Tier 1 that's RTZ. Although, here comes Secret behind there. Internal Envy's got that Omni Slash. Darkness is going to get popped. Bulba pops up the Iron Shell, still has Surge at the ready. The Tier 1 Tower will go down, no Deny coming out, and Secret will exit to the right. I don't know if they've been... Oh yes, they have the Replicate up. And Illidan just jumps in and gets the Zero Blade off. Pile I Die gets dropped down by the Adaptive Strike. They mecked and Healing Water for that too, so... And he had the chase. Raindrop. Yeah. I, I don't know what else you could do to keep your, yeah. your Disruptor alive, but that's... That's pretty much it. And that's how you've got to approach the fight, fight as Fantastic Five. Have Morphling on the front lines, find an instant kill. Disruptor's actually probably a... B Disruptor acts the two big ones. Disruptor's the easier guaranteed kill. You see there, Mech and Healing Ward doesn't save him. So if you can kill the Disruptor, that Wombo combo of, combo of Secret is now just a Vacuum Wall. And the Static Storm won them that fight more than the Vacuum yes. Wall did, because that's what prevented Oracle from getting spells off. It's a yep. silence on the entire Fantastic Five team completely destroyed them. So although there was a net worth advantage, it has swung back down into Secret's favor. I still don't think Fantastic Five are in that bad of a position, all things considered. So there's a 1,000 net worth advantage for Secret. They have the Blink Tagger up for Yol. We're getting to that point where it's getting kind of, let's maybe focus more on farm. Let's try to make sure we secure our late game potential. Uh, although now with a new limited BKB for RTZ and the Ethereal Blade, as we've talked about for Illidan, you have to wonder when the next engagement is going to break out, and I think it might be pretty soon as they have the Aghanims for the Dar uh, excuse me, the Night Stalker. Yeah. This is where, like you say, I totally agree. Fantastic Five are not in a pretty good position. They're not worried at all. They've just hit the like Ethereal Blade timing. The Axe is perhaps the just as big 
one that you want to have with the Ethereal Blade, because the vision advantage is it's going to be what takes away some of Secret's Roche taking potential. Uh, Secret, who drafted very much around this being a slower paced Roche game, you have to be scared of going for Roche when Knight's over his axe. Oh, Pasha is going to be Giklum's back, and that axe is gone. They'll bring him down first. That's just the damage with Desolator. Not even using the BKB, not needed for Arteezy. Just a smart play from Secret being aggressive. And it's right around again. This is the time oh, we saw last game. It's so right around lucky. the Roche, Roche respawn time, and they'll find it perfectly. And yeah. they're going to go right in, take it down. And the only thing you can really do for Fantastic Five is split push. But Ilden's not in the position to split push. He, he can't get up top. He has no replicate sending himself up there with Armen. So it's just Yol up here, and I, this is not the best split pusher. And in fact, I don't think he's going to even do any damage to this tier two tower. Yeah, it was a fairly fast, like a 45 second Roche respawn, which benefits secret if night stalker respawns before roche is up fantastic five can contest it so secret will be thinking their lucky stars for that one but they they, they made that opportunity they find the pick off right. it's a great smoke rotation and then roche happens to be up and they know when roche is up they've got the ta scouting potential so what do you think about the ogre call for illidan um i i hesitate to think that it's a bkb although i'm i think it has to be bkb um, the only other thing I'm thinking of right now is Dragonlance. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think you go for a Dragonlance this, this late. This late, yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a cost-effective good item on Morphling. It's all the stats you could kind of need, but if you if you want to go Dragonlance, I feel like you could get it much earlier. Yeah, I agree. I think it's just a BKB for the Disruptor Silent, and making sure he doesn't get caught in, like, a vacuum wall, too. They have another smoke, are so. you kidding? See where they have? I feel like they've used all their smokes, but I they keep but getting do you them. Think, like, did they use any in the early game? And No, they were farming. They, That's true. They've used them all in the last five minutes. Did they and give Pasha a gem? Okay, I just wanted to make sure they have a gem on him. So, this is where smokes are really actually important for Secret, because against the Ag's Night Stalker, you're not going to be able to move around the map without being detected at night. Blink away, as uh, RTZ was about to get scouted. And yeah, they see him. They should see the rest of the team, too. Oh, maybe not. They're, they're, they did, I think they saw him over here. They might have been smoked behind them, actually. Uh, it, unless the smoke dissipated. I don't think they actually used it. Did they, uh, they may have not used it yet. They still should have one in the yeah. They have one in the shop. I don't think they have one in the courier either. Yeah. So they want to be. I mean, they could use it during this Aegis timing if Secret want to try and take a chance to get a big advantage. I like the hood pick up on Axe, and you got to recognize that the biggest threat right now is the Morphling, and it's more magic damage than physical. Right. Once he gets like maybe four items, like a uh, Lincoln's, he's going BKB. So once he has BKB plus like a the Butterfly or a Manta, then he starts to right click a bit more. But for now, it's the shotgun combo that's going to kill you off. I imagine someone like Pilot down the Disruptor just wants to go straight into a Glimmer Cape, get a bit of magic immunity. Yeah, he's already got the cl casual cloak. Could even get a casual hood. Like, I, I actually think casual hood is really good this game for a Disruptor just to stay alive against Morphling. Yeah, I would agree. And that's, uh, that's a Han player thing, as people have often told me, but I wouldn't mind seeing it for for pilot die in this game just so that he can stay alive. I'm not even sure if that's, that's going to be enough. Maybe with Raindrop it's enough against the shotgun. Yeah. Here we see Invading the Jungle Fantastic Five with not all of their heroes, and Secret are looking to respond in kind. Envy is very far forward from the rest of his team. He still has Blade Fury. If they try to go for a shotgun on him, he could just spin it off. Timbersaw is uh, kind of near the tree line over here. He's just away from the rest of his team, and now Ilden has decided to hightail it out of there. His RMN as well as Yol are going to back away, and Secret just pushed down mid right now. They probably want to finish off at least one of these tier twos, whether it's bottom, mid, or top. And I don't blame them for it. It's definitely one of the limitations of the Fantastic Five draft is that they don't have that insta disable. Like there's no blink hex, like a lion type hero um, that can. So if you're if you're a TA or a jug, you can make plays like run around the map by yourself and know that you're relatively safe until there's like a sheep stick on someone and who's yeah. farming that. How are you actually going to die? That's a very good point. Um, BZZ is going to be the one that has to get it. He's yeah. really not anywhere close. And that's kind of like the, oh, you're looking at like 45, 50 minutes down the line for Fantastic Five to to win and kill these heroes they are going to need cheaps. But right now it just allows Secret to play super aggressive with their kind of farming patterns and their, their rotation. So I think Puppy just went for a, a blind blink call. I think it was like here or something. Okay. And like that's just exactly what you were talking about. Just being aggressive, even with Puppy, who doesn't have that, that spin or that refraction to work with. And with Aegis still up, I, I don't see Fantastic Five looking to fight this, which is unfortunate no. because it means this tier 2 tower is going to go down and it Secret will accrue even more of an advantage, so they're just giving up little by little by little. Uh, that's a dire scan, that's a replicate they'll find, and they're looking for him. Blink Call is going to go and they'll waste probably a, a little bit on killing this replicate. It is taking a lot of damage to bring down. Boulder Smash comes through, the Illusion is eventually killed, but 
nothing there that actually turns into an engagement for Fantastic Five. Like you look at this map right now, Fantastic Five have great map vision. They've got deep wards up. They've got the Night Stalker Acceptor. It's nighttime, but despite having a vision advantage, they can't get much done. The Jug and the TA are too unkillable. It's just the Morphling who's really farmed. The Timbersaw's in decent fighting shape, but the problem is the Earth Spirit can't do enough in these fights because of Jug having Blade Fury, because of TA having BKB. I mean, he pretty much needs to hit a Boulder Smash Silence for it yeah. to, be, uh, to get a kill on either of these heroes. And Oracle's that purely defensive hero as well, so it, do it just feels like Fantastic Five is slightly missing having enough firepower to fight into secret when they're grouped up. They can look for a pickoff here or there with the, using the shotgun, but... I just don't feel like BKB is necessarily the best item here. I think Illidan may need to even consider something more aggressive, something with a bit more damage output. I think it might be too late. But yeah, he's, he's bought it. Until he gets another damage item, I, I think Fantastic Five just will lack the firepower. Yeah. He's going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting. Because BZZ, I mean, he's 5,000 and 6,000 and worth behind the Jug and TA, respectively. Yep. He's really just, and it, with Refraction, with Blade Fury, he's just not going to be able to pump out enough damage, with Mech especially as well. Uh, BZZ, I mean, he's he's going to have to kind of focus down the supports and, and try to bring them down quickly first. But it, it's... I don't know. I agree with you. I just don't think you fight without another right-click item for Illidan. I don't really see them contesting any more pushes from these squads. And we just take a, I think, an adaptive strike from Illidan. The way forward, forward. He wants to get that at least kill on the healing ward, which doesn't do much. He does push out the creep wave in the time. Yeah. But RT is still pushing bottom, and he's actually going to get the creep wave up to the tier three tower, and that's yeah. going to force a rotation. And he's always going to be limited where he can't throw the shotgun at Jug or TA. So you've got a shotgun. The Axe now has a hood, so he's not a great target. Like, let's say the Dark Zero Disruptor, you shotgun one of those two heroes, and then how do you deal with the Jug and the TA? That's going to come from the right-click damage. So until he gets that one more item, he's not dealing with the Jug the TA. His team sure aren't dealing with those heroes. No. We might be waiting a while before we see our next big engagement. If we see an engagement, it'll probably be from this Disruptor Smoke more than anything. Yeah. Uh, and actually, they're kind of grouping up now. Maybe I spoke too soon. I, and secretly in the driving driver's seat, I think they can actually take the fight to Fantastic Five. Uh, and on their own terms, it is such an important clutch game that they're more likely to play things conservatively. And the, the other concern is if you five man too much, you're going to get split push. The Morphling is not good. I'm not going to look to fight into five heroes when he can just go to another lane and force you back. Which is what he's been doing for a couple of minutes now. He did that in the top lane, just as you saw. They'll have to clear out that creep wave. And really, oh, all right. Well, I thought I heard a static storm. For Yol, okay, 39 seconds, you, a kill is a kill, you're moving together as a team, you get some extra mo uh, room on the map to work with, but he's only dead for 30 seconds, it's not the worst kill for Fantastic Five, but it's just, again, a kill after a kill that you that you really don't want to give up if you're Fantastic Five. I, I don't know... I don't know what you get next as the, the Night Stalker. Well, I mean, maybe yes. he gets the Hex or like an Abyssal, but that's going to take a long time to get to. Maybe you go Midas, just secure late game or something. Mm -hmm. Although it's a bit late. Yeah, it's almost a bit late now, but Vlad's is a possibility, just to get the aura for your team. Uh, don't mind. Yeah, there isn't really the ability for Oracle or Earth Spirit to find. And there's there's other items that Earth Spirit especially wants to go for over the, the Vlad's. But... And I, I think there's also some consideration where you try and, like you say, scale your Night Stalker to the late game, whether that's Midas or going straight into some kind of DPS, because right now it's looking like Morphling has to do this all on his own, and there's a lot of big, scary late game heroes. Because I feel like Night Stalker late game actually is deceptively strong for a lot of people, or for a lot of heroes, against against some of these heroes anyways. And you need some more some more damage coming out. And, and and just any sort of disable, you know, because Void is not enough, as we've talked about time and time again already in this game. Yeah. I think part of the problem is that the like, crippling fear, one of his biggest like late game, well, one of his biggest tools, the silence, is going to get weaker and weaker as you go late game because there's going to be low orbs, there's going to be BKBs. Right. Um, Doxy is going to have the Guardian Grief, so he can get rid of the silence. Um, has he got it already? Oh, he's got it already. Okay. Yep. I'm five minutes behind. Not to mention the beginnings of BKB for yeah. him. So I mean, it, it's all about taking away the ability, like as many of Fantastic Five's way to win fights, which is going to be. I mean, it's all magic. It's really all magic damage until Morphling gets a even when Morphling gets the right click. I'm like, let's say this is a six hundred Morphling. If everyone on secret can block all the magic damage output, the physical damage isn't enough from Illidan, no yeah. matter how many items he has. So because having... he can only target one person with his right click. Yeah. So having 
the having right click items is not the only solution for for like getting Illidan more found is not just like the the way to victory for Fantastic Five. They have to find answers with the rest of their heroes. Maybe it's like an Ag Scepter on Yol's Earth Spirit to make some big flashy plays to catch some heroes out or to make saves. But uh, BZZ needs a tumble. We need to see that scary late game Timbersaw with Shivers, Ag Scepter, Hex. Octarine, whatever it may be, but the farm is just not really there for BZZ. The the catch from Secret is kind of preventing him from moving out on the map. It feels a lot like last game where Arteezy and uh, Envy and, and everyone else, they had like four late game cores or even five late game cores if you were able to get to that point. And it was just inevitable that they were going to win that game. It kind of feels the same way here. I do feel a bit better about Illidan and his farm, but he has now been equipped by Arteezy on that TA, so that's uh, another it's, big sign. It's just, yeah, a sign of things to come when, I mean, four of the top six heroes on the secret side, Darkseer and Axe are starting to pull even further away from that Night Stalker, and that's where it's like, you talk about a Night Stalker trying to scale more to the late game, getting some maybe more DPS items or fi like fighting items, but if you're this far behind, like, there's no fighting items that really allow you to fight. Um, you're, if you're 10k, five, or even just 5k net worth behind like the enemy offlaners and stuff, and 10k net worth behind the enemy carries, you're not fighting it. You're not going right, to trade right clicks with a TA or a Jug. Right. That's a losing battle. So, yep. uh, I think Night Stalker's almost just has to just go for a Vlad's or something co cheap, cost effective. Um, similar, like, similar story with Oracle and Earth Spirit. They're just going to have to go for utility items. Yeah, yeah. Medallion. That's a nice, nice option. Good call. As he picks that up, uh, and it flies it out to him. Gets that medallion ready to go. You just gotta recognize that. I mean, the, these heroes don't want to build MK. It, it forces them into an MKB, maybe a direction they don't want to go. Jug would rather get like a butterfly or a moonshard TA. Once the, well has the data list, but we'll take some time to get an MKB up, and then it limits their late game itemization, having to being forced into an MKB. Or if they don't go MKB, then you've got the evasion on your frontliner. Oh my god, this is such a good play. And Fantastic Five, if they commit to a fight now, I'm sure they will lose uh, a Tier 3 tower at the very least. And V is still sitting top lane right now and working on that set of racks, I'm sure. And in fact, you probably need to leave and keep This is so home. brutal, yeah. Uh, this it's, it's... is just a smart play. And V might get caught. Yeah, they, they have no catch. You can blade through your TP and that's almost Roche secured. Although they have left everyone else here apart from Timbersaw. Question is how fast is? I like that Envy's not TP'd yet because he's recognizing like, okay, they only TP Timbersaw. They're trying to make a play where uh, Timbersaw gets back for that Roche fight, but the answer may just be sending the Morph Replicate up top or something. And if you can get the Morph Replicate top, then he can perhaps use that Does... to push it out. He has it. He's not. He's. Used oh, I think it, it just uh, expired. Yeah. Oh, okay. Couriers. Ooh, that courier almost got scouted. It is the Shivas for BZZ. It could have been a hex. I'm I'm fine with Shivas too, but again, it's just uh, we keep harping on this lockdown issue, but it's going to continue to be an issue until they get some sort of item. It's there's like so many items he needs. The Shivas is by by no means a bad choice. It's just a different approach to the game. Ooh, are they going to find Envy? Boulder Smash comes through. Waveform adaptive strike pops the BKB. Can he TP out in time? Timber Chain is up. Yeah. BKB Shivas guard coming through. They need more right clicks. Do they have the job? They do. And he is down for 83. He does have buyback. That is probably the most important kill so far in this game for Fantastic Five. But it looks like they will have to trade Roche for it. Which and is, that's that, almost not worth it. it was a, that was a, just kind of goes back to the Blink Dagger pickup on Earth Spirit. It was just a great item selection because it gives him that Blink, like, melee stun opportunity onto the Envy Jug. And that was where the damage... It, it allowed them to get the shotgun damage without him Blade Fury dodging. And then you can't blade through your TP because he'll die to the physical. They'll find Pilot I die at the very least with the boulder smash. The ward comes through. They had to wait for the kinetic field to go down. Fortune said everyone's already TP back, so Pilot I is left to his own devices. He did buy before dying, so at least that's going well for him. So two kills, one being a jug, and that's not a very important kill. It actually gives the Morphling more net worth than RTZ and gets him up to close to that, I would imagine, Manta style. Uh... What were you looking for? I was just seeing who killed the jug. Uh, I was wondering if Timbersaw got the kill. Uh, yeah, I, I think Timbersaw getting farm right now is the big thing, but Earthstrike got the last hit. Not the best, but hey, it's it's still like a 800 gold swing his way. Eventually gets that Agamem Scepter, maybe, yeah. and you look back at that kill. I'm like, okay, maybe that's huge. Blink Dagger for Night Stalker, actually. Hmm. Okay. That's I mean, one the, way the, to get close. Blink silence. Blink silence, yeah. But Envy has the Manta style, so he has a way out of it. Um. It's... What is Arteezy building next? I think he, he got the... Oh, he got a Daedalus. Plus yeah. 3.1k. Man, he hits hard. 
Luckily, there are a couple of Ethereal Blades. One for Timber. There's, I think, one for the yeah Oracle too. Obviously, Ethereal Blade gives you the uh, Ghost Form as well if you use it on yourself. Yeah. I think was the change that was made a while ago. And so He'll probably just save money now to see if he needs an MKB. If he, you see Morphling going Butterfly, or even just the Solar Crest may result in an MKB purchase. I think Illidan goes for Butterfly eventually. Yeah, it's it's like one of those ideal items to have on a Morph, but you want to try and if you can buy it and RTZ is committed to something other than MKB, the item's even better. So there is some reason to try and hide the item pickup. But for now, yeah, Illidan, he's he's scary. He's he's getting there. The but Manta, it's another five minutes where they have to deal with ages, though. Yeah. And the Manta's the split push, where you're recognizing the state of this game, where we're always going to be lacking ways to team fight and actually kill off the Jug to TA. We can get pickoffs like you and try and punish the Jug like we saw top, but realistically, Secret with Aegis, if they're five manning, you stop Secret's push, not by fighting into them, but by split pushing the side lane. So Morphling, I think his next item is actually going to be a Boots of Travel, if anything. Um, just to give him that global movement before he goes for anything, like before he commits to his six item. I'm down for that. BZZ just purchased his, so uh, both of them getting it means that the split push is definitely an option. Tier 2 tower top's already gone, so Illidan will push in and try to force out TBs towards that tier 3 tower. Micro your illusions, micro your illusions. <laughs> micro your illusions. Oh, okay. Uh, it took you a bit longer than I yep, anticipated. Could but... be attacking as we speak. That's game losing, Mott. He missed out on some damage, man. <laughs> That's just not efficient. You hate to see it. Yo, he tries to clear out the creep wave, but here comes the rest of yeah. secret. Halfway to an Ags. Other, other nice thing about the Ags is to block the Omni Slash damage. Yes. Some defensive capabilities here for sure from not just him, but the rest of his team as well. Yeah. Secret have got themselves in position where the split push at top is still outside of their base, so. They may feel confident to try and he's got his the manta back up. He could just go in Manta and maybe even have himself. He's yeah. got a BKB. I don't see. Oh God! No There's creeps in the no base. No glyph on the radiant side. This though. is bad. I think they just lose their melee racks. I'm pretty sure. Although the Sheba's guard will go. They get the boulder smash off. RTZ does have the Aegis. Magnus Eyes will go. The voids up next. The fraction's still there. He's got it. Still not using it. Not Meanwhile, now the TPs will go. Range Brax taken down by Illidan, and here comes Puppy. Misses the call, though. Adaptive Puppy Strike. He's dead. got the Ethereal Blade, but he gets the Force out. Eats the cheese. Waveform comes through. Illidan still wants this kill. Meanwhile, everyone is getting chased down. They did take down They're the Aegis, mind you. And RTZ gets Boulder Smash to sell, except the Force Step has to pop the BKB. They are missing that right click, though, from Illidan. He's he actually got the melee racks, but now it looks like everyone is dying for Fantastic Five. It's secret. They just get RTZ to pop his BKB. BZZ will go down momentarily. He's caught by the kinetic field. Timber chain out, but now RTZ is here with some oh. surge, and that's a triple kill for him. Very and close to bring down Envy there. I think mm, it was really well played by Fantastic Five. They get the top racks. They've now got buybacks as well. And they're actually going to defend their racks. Yeah, they, they take a full set top lane. As great as it was, I think it could have been even better if they didn't overcommit to the chase. They need to just stop back the up. TPs. Like, Night Stalker has the vision. If he just chases with a Blink Dagger, he can Blink Void to stop TPs back. And Morphling in the end, I think he could have even threatened to get at least the T3 oh, Tower mid. Illidan? Okay. Yeah, they did not want to fight him. I thought they it were going to go on him for a second. It was just Puppy defending him. We saw what he was doing to Puppy. He was wrecking him. So I think he could have even considered threatening the mid T3 Tower and the mid racks there. But he plays it safe. So you get the one lane, you get back off. Your team defended your own racks. So it's still a big win for Fantastic Five. I just... I kind of look back and think it could have been even better. Yeah, they did They did have to buy back on BZZ, and now he's gotten down to seven bloodstone charges on top of Night Stalker going down, but he did not have to buy back. Um, and Oracle had to buy back, I, I think. Yes, he did. Although oh, he has man. 1,200 gold after buyback, which is pretty impressive. It's envy and the secret team just going to be having nightmares about, like, no TPs back to base, yeah, you know? I mean, it's, it's the classic Eternal Envy play. I don't know how that happens against Envy again. Yeah. That's just... <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see the fight again in a couple minutes and see if like there was some TP cancel or anything. But I, I only saw the Axe's TP being channeled to defend, and Axe cannot fight the Morphling by himself. Yeah, I saw I saw Illidan go up there. I was watching that fight for a while, and then I saw them try to back up, and then I saw RTZ just die, and I was like, what? Okay, well, that's interesting. Still, uh, a secret not in that bad of a position. Sure, they lost a set of racks, but again, forcing out two buybacks... Um, Winning a pretty big fight. Arteezy is so tough to deal with when he pops that BKB. It's yeah. It, you really it, it was if Illidan's there, 
they probably, because he was at maybe 25% HP, they probably kill RTZ in that situation if the Odin's there. Yes. And that's, he didn't have the boot to travel. Um, that could have been like the difference maker as far as, he still doesn't as far as getting right back into that Scotty fight. Next, I think. Oh, Scotty's actually a good option. Scotty or Butterfly, one yeah. of the two. Yeah. The Butterfly can get, the evasion component can get countered more, but uh, what's the, okay, there It's Orb of Venom, yeah. yeah. I, 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 as soon as you mentioned Sky, I'm like, that actually sounds better. Oh, than the courier's been scouted. And V sees it. Oh, okay, that, he bought everything. Oh, I was about to say, if he, he bought, bought it, everything on that courier. Nine, it's not. You're, it's not necessarily game losing, it's just delayed. It's more like a. It, it just pretend he didn't have the farm for Scotty yet. Right, alright. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's still in a good position. It's two minutes it's and annoying, 40 seconds. It's, it's not that bad. It's like waiting out a, an Aegis yeah. or something. I think the bigger issue is he doesn't have buyback, I believe. He shouldn't now, no. Yeah, yeah he's 330 gold away, though. He, he, can, can, farm, farm it. he yeah. can farm that very quickly, especially with his illusions. Yeah. But here's the push coming in top. They want to even up this Ooh. rack situation. They're going to smoke behind Boba. If he or dies Ortiz, without rather. buyback, that is, he's going to have nightmares tonight. Yeah, I mean, as bad as it was for Envy to lose that set of racks, it's going to be even worse if Bills and goes down in this fight. Although he is very strong, even without Scotty. Puppy jumps in, gets the call onto PZZ. He popped back, and he's the one that dies without buyback. And now, this is looking bad. PKBs were popped, though, not for Arteezy necessarily. Lincoln Spear was broken, and I think they were looking for a glimpse or something to just try to break it, waveform through. They get the... Nildon's gonna pop the BKB in man fight. I don't know if this is gonna work. Bulba's gonna get caught. Magnetized, Static Storm on top, misses on everyone. They will bring down Yol nonetheless, and Nildon, this man fight is not working. The False Promise, Envy does some serious damage, and he even goes oh, down after that. the False Promise. Oh, and Fantastic no. Five might have just ended the game for themselves. Secret putting themselves in a great position now, and it looks like they will move on to the TI main event, and well done from this squad. They made a couple of mistakes here at the end of the game, but when it came to crunch time, they were able to get the job done, it looks like, God. That was just such a brutal way to lose the game. Losing your Scotty, and then he must... How much, How far away from buyback is he? He got it to like 1,700 gold. He was 300 at one point. It's 200 now. Oh, that is just... <sighs> Once they killed that Soul courier, once they killed that courier, they knew that he probably had it, bought something there. I mean, this game was still a very even game. Even with the racks advantage, it still felt like momentum was like secret were more the ones in control. But to lose in that fashion as Fantastic Five is just brutal. I can't believe that happened. Envy's like, okay, we killed the courier. There's probably a morphling item on the courier at this point in time, and with that, we probably try to force in. They find themselves the kill on BCC, and Illidan kind of has to do it all on his own. They get off the stone form with the enchant remnant pushing back. He gets forced forward, pops the BKB. He might still die to the well and will, but uh, they'll barely defend, and I can't even really call it defending at this point. They've lost Megas, and yeah. Pilot Eye might go you down, but that's really only a small, small, small consolation prize. He might even get out, honestly. Eh, now he's dead. Okay. I, mean, I guess we can't we can't quite call this game just yet with a morph. Like six slotted morphling and a, I guess a, a potential just to go for the throne if you're in fantastic five position and can win one fight. But uh, it is going to be. It would be one of the greatest. Comeback, it would be yeah. one of the greatest comebacks in Dota history. Maybe the greatest comeback, I think, because of how far behind they are now. That's a full three sets of racks, twenty-five thousand net worth advantage. Illidan now has gotten the courier respawn. He'll buy another point booster, or rather the point booster I think that he needed to get for the... And it wasn't just him, I don't believe. It was a talisman of evasion oh. for our man. It was actually his solar crest, too, so that would have made it even harder to bring down Illidan. Because I, I didn't see the Scotty pop up, so I was like, well, okay, so it didn't have... I, for a second, I didn't think it had the Scotty, and he stole the money, so... Courier? No, Pasha, you won't be able. Uh, you won't be as lucky as Envy, that's, and, and that's too dead. Yeah, and I, probably the entire team now. As Illidan's gonna have to pop the BKB, the Omni Slash will go. Good Ghost Scepter's coming out, but it's probably too much at this point. Wave form away, BC too far, and they get the call. Good false promise, but he is not doing nearly enough damage, and that is it. They calling Blade and Static Storm for victory parade, and Team Secret will move on to the TI main event. And really, was there any doubt? This team was star-studded. They made it through the open qualifiers. With relative ease. There, there were some doubts. Yeah, all right. There, all right Open there were... qualifiers thrown on 1,000 HP. I think Seeker fans had a lot of doubts, but. Pro Dota, best Whew. team EU, perhaps, or what a, the other team they were really down against yeah. as well. But they, they had some.